I might be the wrong guy here, but I really think that this is the worst extension ever to be on VS Code. Stories equal time wasting. Screw you for creating this, you godless heathen. Please, no. I hate this so much. Why would someone code this aberration? What a useless thing. No. The soy is emanating from this plugin. Okay, last one's just kind of funny. Yeah, so I kind of wanted to do like an epic intro where I'm like reading all these mean comments and then I'm now like, whoa, look at this, the tides have turned. Look at all these people buying their words now. I've sold the extension, whoa. Um, but there just wasn't any mean comments. So that was like the best I got for you there. So there you go. But yes, I have sold VS Code Stories and I am no longer associated with it in any way. And I figured it'd be good before we get into the details of that for me to tell you what has happened since I post the last video. So when VS Code Stories first went live, the first 30 minutes was fantastic. Everyone was having a great time, the extension was working, they were just uploading GIFs of themselves coding, and their editors, and their terminals, and yeah, it was wonderful. But then, after that, it was less wonderful, because I made a large mistake. I made the mistake of trusting in humanity. Most of humanity is okay, but there's a few bad apples in there that kind of ruins it for everyone. And these bad apples reverse engineered my API, which, you know, it's not complex. It's a very, very simple API. And they found out you don't have to just post coding GIFs. You can post any types of GIFs to this API. And so they posted porn GIFs to the API. And so porn was showing up in VS Code stories literally everywhere. When I saw this was happening, I stopped the servers, I wiped the database, and I spent a little bit of time putting in a filter to detect whether something was adult content or not. So it would take the GIF and it would upload it to Azure's image vision service and it would tell me if it was adult or not. And at first that worked out pretty good. I turned back on the servers with that on and it was clean for maybe, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes. And most of like the, I guess really graphic stuff or the stuff that was very you know obvious was filtered out but the thing is these guys are good and they picked images or gifs where it's like half the page is vs code and then a little bit in the corner you know there's a nasty image or nasty gif and uh, the worst part about it or the most awkward part the cherry on top if you will is they use my profile image. So what would happen is you'd be like, oh cool, let me go check out VS Code Stories by Ben. And they open it up and then they click on my story, right? And then these two giant tits just come bouncing on the screen. It's like, oof. Uh, so yeah, that happened and uh, that was not good. Well, for most people, some people enjoyed it. For those of you that got unwillingly flashed, I would like to apologize because I definitely should have had some better things in place before I even launched VS Code Stories. And I'd like to especially apologize to Obey, who because of this failed No Nut November. Sorry, man. Stay strong. Next November, you'll get them. I looked into a bunch of APIs and machine learning models that are supposed to be able to identify porn, and they do a good job with obvious ones, but it's pretty easy to get a GIF that skirts past the filter. And so I realized pretty quickly that it, there's not a great way for me to programmatically fight this and have like a filter that's detecting stuff. And this was right around the time that I posted the tweet that I am just never doing anonymous uploads again, at least with images. And so... I just decided to lock submissions and delete all of the porn that I could find on VS Code Stories and it basically just froze it in place. This was kind of a bummer because there's a bunch of people downloading the extension and wanting to try it out, but it was kind of just read only and no one could upload new stories. So I kind of scrambled to try to find a solution and what I ended up doing was implementing two things. Number one, you have to log in with GitHub to be able to upload a story. And then number two, instead of doing GIFs where people could you know, upload sketchy stuff, I decided to basically, kind of inspired by ASCII cinema, record your keystrokes when you're like typing in VS Code, obviously when you press the record button. So for this method, when you actually click on a story, it would open a regular VS Code like text window for like Python or JavaScript, whatever language you're using, and it would basically just call the VS Code API and it would play back the keystrokes that you recorded. And in concept, this was pretty cool, um, but it turned out to be just a little bit jank because I was constrained by the VS Code API and also there wasn't an obvious place to put like likes and the profile image and all the stuff. So I went back to the old design, which is just a web view, but instead of displaying a GIF in the middle, I'm displaying the code just as regular text. And then I have like this text widget player thing, I called it, which would just replay the keystrokes and update the text. 
and I even add like a pause and play button and you could speed it up 3x times if you wanted to and so it would be kind of like watching a story but it was just text replaying and right around this time as I was trying to figure out whether I wanted to like continue doing this text player thing or if I wanted to go back to GIFs or maybe do both of them somebody contacted me and was like hey Ben are you interested in selling VS Code Stories? And I was already kind of struggling to find the time to work on VS Code Stories. So I was like, you know what? Yeah, I'm down to sell it. I think VS Code Stories has a lot of potential, but to actually realize that potential, somebody needs to build out the features, polish the application, drive it forward. And I don't have the time to be that person to do that. And so I sold VS Code Stories. And no, Microsoft did not buy it. They didn't even give me an offer. Can you believe it? Like, I'm truly insulted. But you know what? Microsoft, maybe next extension. You know what? Get your wallets ready. I'm telling you right now, it is going to be fire. Bill Gates, my next VS Code extension, when it drops, be prepared. You're going to want this one. But anywho, I sold it to an individual, and I also transferred over the GitHub repository to him. So he now owns that, and he has created a new extension on the VS Code store that is going to be the future of VS Code stories. And I will leave a link in the description if you want to check that out. And if you go install my extension, it is now pointing at his extension. He is also going to be doing a Kickstarter for the development of this, so go check that out if you are interested. For those of you wondering, I sold it for $9,000, so I'm not quite an ex-millionaire, maybe after the next extension, but I am now an ex-founder.